Ivan the Terrible. The name refers to two people in history. The first is a 16th century Russian Grand Prince of Moscow, who later became the nation's first Tsar, otherwise known as Ivan the Fourth Vasilievich. The other Ivan the Terrible was a Nazi monster, a notorious concentration camp guard at Treblinka, a man who put to death 850,000 or more in the gas chambers of his regime of evil. For many, many years after the war, well into the 21st century, nations all over the world, and particularly in the United States and in Israel, there were justice officials who worked in special Nazi hunting departments. It was the job of these officials to root out and bring to justice Nazis who escaped justice for their sickening deeds. One of their biggest targets was Ivan the Terrible, and rightly so. In the United States after the war lived a Ukrainian immigrant, John Demanchanchuk. He was an auto worker, and he was also suspected to be Ivan the Terrible. He was arrested, held in custody, and then extradited to Israel to face a war crimes trial there in 1985. He was convicted there and sentenced to death. I normally do not agree with the death penalty, but being a person of European descent, I support it for all Nazi war criminals. To be clear, I'm all for it for any evil humans who get all gung-ho and genocidal. I think there's just a line there that is clear as day. But back to Demjanjo. Luckily for him, in a way, he waited some time in an Israeli prison before the sentence could be carried out. Also luckily for him, the Israeli authorities took pains to ensure that their sentence was just, including obtaining copies of records from Russia. In 1993, the Russian government released evidence that John Demjanjuk was, in fact, not Ivan the Terrible. Recall that the land that is now Ukraine was part of Russia during World War II. In fact, Ivan the Terrible was Ivan Marchenko. And in fact, the U.S. Justice Department's Nazi hunting department had that information in the form of two statements from Treblinka guards that were obtained in 1978 and 1979, both of whom agreed that Marchenko was Ivan the Terrible. They also had a list of guards who served at Treblinka and Demjanjuk, who was born Ivan Demjanjuk, was not on that list. Believe it or not, the Justice Department would actually argue that this information was trivial. Only mildly significant is what they called it when called out by the Federal Appeals Court for misleading them. Only mildly significant is what they called it when they failed to tell Demjanjuk's lawyers about the evidence they had in their possession that would have shown that Marchenko and not Demjanjuk was Ivan the Terrible. The appeals court disagreed that that information was trivial and ordered an inquiry into their being misled. You don't want to mislead the court. Never, never, never. Bad plan, stop, abort, don't do it. The first reason should be obvious. Lawyers have to be held to high standards to ensure that the justice system works. Judges cannot make fair and legal judgments when they're being misled. The second, though, in my opinion, is the more important reason. Public has to trust that the state is not going to lie in order to imprison them, in order to deport them, or to seek the death penalty against them. In any democracy, it is essential that the state do all they are capable of to maintain the public trust. And yes, I acknowledge that at times, as in this case, they fail utterly in maintaining that trust, whether or not it was malicious or intentional. And third, 
in such an important case as a Holocaust participant, what would happen here is often used and quoted in an effort to discredit the testimony of Holocaust survivors. That is because near 50 years after the war, six survivors stood in Israel and identified them Janchuk as Ivan the Terrible. Without any consideration of the frailties of human memory after trauma and after a significant period of time has passed, without any consideration for problems with what is called in-box identification. That is, the identification of a suspect in court when that suspect is the only person in the prisoner's box or at the defense table. These natural frailties can be dealt with ethically, but they can't be dealt with when the court is being misled. These natural frailties are the reason we have to expect authorities to be diligent and thorough when they identify a person, especially if you're going to call them one of the most evil persons who has ever lived. The public has every right to require that authorities not abuse their power, and when they do, they be held to account. In this case, the lawyer in charge of the Nazi hunting unit at the DOJ his name was Alan A. Ryan Jr. He was found guilty of misconduct. The court would say he and other former government lawyers each, quote, acted with reckless disregard for the truth, end quote. Demjanjuk was no angel by any means, but he should not be executed as Ivan the Terrible. He should not even have been extradited to Israel as Ivan the Terrible. Not so much for his own sake, but for the sake of public trust. Based on the evidence provided by the Russians and the evidence that was in the hands of the DOJ, his conviction was overturned in Israel. However, that did not end the issue for Demjanja. As I said, the man was no angel. He would be extradited to Germany, still to face another war crimes trial. The Russian evidence would show that John Demjanjuk had been a guard at a different camp at Sobibor. He was the lowest ranked person up to 2009 at least to be prosecuted for war crimes. What? A Russian guard at a Nazi camp? Well, yeah. The SS was running out of manpower at the time to inflict their evil plans. In this case, the extermination of Jews in Poland and so they recruited Russian prisoners of war to the cause. Demjanjuk had actually been drafted into the Soviet army in 1940 and captured in 1942 during the Battle of the Crimea. He was being held in Kelm, Poland, where he was recruited to be a guard at Sobibor and took his oath to serve the SS. His citizenship was revoked for lying on his entry papers about who he was and how he had been employed in 2001. You see, under the program that he immigrated to the U.S. under, anyone who assisted the enemy, and that would apply to those who took an oath to serve the SS and then become a guard at a concentration camp, would be automatically disqualified. He certainly did not show up in the U.S. and say, hey, I was a Nazi guard, by any means. He lied and said he had lived in Sobibor from 1937 through 1943. And then he lied again, saying, no, no, it was 1934 to 1944. Demjanjuk was convicted for his work for the SS at the German trials and died while appealing both the U.S. decision to revoke his citizenship and the German conviction. Allen, the man who misled the court, and had them believe that Demjanjuk was Ivan the Terrible, died earlier this year. As for Ivan the Terrible, he was seen once at the end of the war in 1945, and there have been no verified sightings of him since then. Thank you for listening. If you're enjoying these videos and want more, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss any videos. Thank you for watching. We really appreciate it.